F-105 from the chief fighter, fighter bomb. Our target that day was a surface-to-air missile installation just northeast of Hanoi. And I was leading a flight of four from the chiefs on that target on 22nd of October, 1965. Just prior to the target, I realized I'd been hit. And uh, to back that up, I had been flying at treetop level for 34 minutes at uh, better than 500 miles an hour all the way. And about two minutes after I delivered my weapons on the target, the aircraft exploded. Fred Cherry was lucky to land in one piece. Bullets whizzed by his parachute, his shoulder was smashed, and his wrist was broken. He was the 43rd American captured in the North and the first black. The communists tied him up and took him to a schoolyard where villagers poured out shouting, kill the Yankee. The first thing I can remember saying is, looking around, I says, damn, I'll be here a long time. But that long time to me at that point in time was three, four months max, because we're going to get this thing over with and we'll be back home. Well, that three to four months, that long time I considered at that time, uh, turned into be seven and a half years. A few days before, a young Navy pilot from Tennessee took off for North Vietnam from the carrier Independence. Porter Halliburton and Fred Cherry would soon find their lives forever intertwined. I was one of these guys that just never thought too much about being captured. I, I thought, well, maybe I would get killed, uh, um, but never, never captured. I think the Vietnamese had learned enough about uh, Halley. Uh, you know, he was a Navy aviator. I'm a Air Force aviator. I'm a Southern black. He's a Southern white. He's younger than I. I don't know whether they thought moving me in with Fred was going to be the ultimate horror or not. It's the thing that would break me. Um, but there was no reason for it. I had not suddenly decided to talk to them. I hadn't done anything, and they had not threatened me with that specifically. The communists wanted Fred to broadcast orders to the Bloods fighting in the South to give up the war. It would be a propaganda coup. So they tortured him. I spent a total of 702 days in solitary confinement. Well, I think the stakes were basically his honor. <laughs> um, I don't think that he could have uh, lived with himself, you know, if he, had, if he had done that, if he'd cooperated with him and with them. Uh, I think he could have secured for himself much better treatment, um, perhaps even early release, because certainly being the first black there, I mean, he was, uh, could be somewhat of a celebrity, certainly would have generated a lot of interest in the press and so on. And if he'd been cooperative, then of course they would have treated him very well, and I think they may have considered releasing him early. One period there in 67, 93 days straight, that included uh, beatings three times a day or more. I think the guards were obligated to do it at least three times, and if they wanted to throw something in extra, that they could do that too. And that is living in leg irons, the beatings, and you, almost half the time when you reach down to pick up your bowl of soup, um, water soup, that was knocked over on you, and it's summertime, hot as ants and their flies and I never felt at any point that it would be better if Fred gave in to him even if he got medical treatment. Halley did everything one can do to, to, to keep one alive. That was bathe me, feed me, even his food if it if I could handle it. Uh, most times I didn't want mine. I counted up one day and he had something like nine major open wounds in his body at one time. And that's not counting the, the one on his shoulder. So it was pretty tough watching him, even though he didn't complain very often. They came in and told Halley to suit up, he was moving. And we couldn't believe it. I, you know, I lost, good Lord, I lost everything for those Halley, but uh, they took him and uh, away and I was left, it was at night, and 
That's the most lonesome night I've ever spent in my life. I knew it was not going to be good, and uh, I was really heartbroken. Why? Because I'd grown to love her. They were standing right there when they told him to suit up and let's go, and because uh, in spite of what the hell he said, we were going to say goodbye because we were both shedding tears, but. They took it. It would be over six years before Porter Halliburton and Fred Cherry would see each other again. That's when they came home with the other POWs. But they were the only ones who got a hero's welcome. <laughs>